you're looking for simple, Tatum's is real simple. Here's the reminders pop-up screen. When you bring this screen up, you see the ins reminders for inspections. These are like the 90-day inspections for BIT or DOT. You have your loop service reminders, and you can sort these columns by the next hours due, uh, next due as far as kilometer or miles, or how many miles or kilometers to go. So you can put the most critical things up at the top. You can see these ones are way past due. You can do it by kilometers or miles to go, or hours to go if it's based on hours, or days to go if it's based upon a date range. And then you can also print this list out, and you can also include filters in this list if you want to have access to all the part numbers for each filter that might be included in a loop service. Next over here, we have taxes and registration, so you can keep track of your month that the registration is due, next due, your motor vehicle transport due, your um, HUT due, your or highway, highway use tax, your next insurance renewal, and then you have your department or area or location. You can sort it by any of these columns. Permits and inspections, so you have your next DOT inspection, your next 90-day permit, your next annual state inspection, your next over axle gross permit. This is on a per vehicle basis. Your next smoke or CVIP inspection. And then we go over here to the repairs needed. So this would show you any items that are pending that need to be done. And then you have your pending work orders. And so if you're using work orders, you typically wouldn't need to use repairs needed. So you have your pending work orders and with work orders, you can you know keep track of uh, parts uh, labor and then a lot of detail as far as the description of what the item is and you have your driver's reminders which is also your could be reminders for any any personnel and so you've got uh, your CDL number the next physical the next CDL renewal the next uh, motor vehicle report pull the next drug test that needs to be done and you have other personal uh, personnel miscellaneous reminders and over here you've got other endorsements uh, in this case you could have any kind of miscellaneous freeform items that you want to add to the system and you give it a description you give it a number and you put the next due date in and then it tells you how many days to go before it's due over here you have parts inventory reminders this will uh, as you get down to a minimum quantity on hand in the parts inventory which get deducted while you're adding parts to work orders then if you've uh, marked down a minimum quantity on hand before a reorder those parts that need to be reordered will start showing up on this screen here and then obviously you can print that out like you can all the other ones. Edit how soon to be notified. This is how far in advance you want to start seeing items that are due on this screen. So anything based upon an odometer, which is just going to be your loop services, uh, are going to be coming up a thousand miles before they're due. It's going to start showing up on the reminder screen. If something is um, based upon an hours meter, which would be your loop services as well. That's gonna be coming up 10 hours before it's due. And anything based on days, which is pretty much everything else, uh, is gonna come up 10 days before it's due. Uh, that could be loop services, that could be inspections, that could be taxes, registrations, and uh, permits and inspections and so forth. So that's it for this quick overview of the reminders. And then we'll just kind of go over real quickly what you have here on the main screen. So you have your list of equipment here, and then you can also filter by equipment type or customer location, department or area. You can search by equipment number, description, make, model, year, license plate, capital equipment, purchase order number, VIN number, fuel card number, notes, or whether the, where the equipment is out of service. And then you can also, you've got the ability to assign a certain customer, and that can be a, an internal entity for your company, or it can be somebody that you are doing work for, a location, a department or area. You also have the ability to enter in your taxes and registrations here, insurance information here, financials here. You can do coolant and test, coolant testing, oil analysis, and other miscellaneous details. This is stuff that might show up on your DOT unit information report. You update your odometer and hours for the equipment itself from here. Just click on that, enter in the odometer reading, the odometer date. Click update and close, and it'll update this on the screen. And then over here, you've got your loop service uh, sort of overview. You don't click on anything here. And you have your 90-day inspection dates. Now, this can be 90-day. You can change this to 365 if you don't do 90s. So that would say 365. Um, and then that puts in the last time it was done, the next time it's due. And if this is checked, that's going to show this piece of equipment on the reminders for these types of inspections. Over here, you have your 90-day inspections. So you're going to, you can, to add an inspection, you click here. 
And that brings up this list so you can check off everything is okay real quick. And then if you've got maybe, uh, you maybe had two items that were defective, you can just go ahead and mark that as defective and that as defective. And then put in your uh, inspector's name, date inspected and the odometer reading, uh, and then close it. I'm gonna go ahead and clear all. And then uh, that'll cr that creates that inspection. So you can do those real quick. On your uh, loop service, this is where you enter in your preventative maintenance items. You can have multiple loop service types and intervals for each piece of equipment. You just create them on the fly. You can see if I click on this drop down, it shows you the mileage or kilometer interval, the hours meter interval if there is one, and a days interval if there is one. You can use all three if you want to, and whichever one comes first is what's gonna cause this to show up in the reminder screen as it comes due. Uh, need to maintenance some repairs, you have that to keep track of uh, what's come, what needs to be done. You have repairs completed, parts for this equipment, and those three, three tabs, basically you don't really need those if you're using work orders. So you can use them in addition, but it just kind of adds more work so you don't really need them if you're using work orders. Um, you've also got the fuel log to keep track of uh, all of your fuel costs and cost per mile or price per mile and so forth. And then you can also choose the state that you bought or, or province you bought the fuel in. Over here, you can double click and you can choose to put in a beginning and ending odometer reading for each province that the vehicle traveled in during that trip. So kind of help you help you there on your uh, sort of your IFTA reporting. And then over here, you've got your notes. So you can do free form notes, put in as many notes as you want. As you type in, you get another field here. And then over here you have attachments. Attachments are for any external attachments like a scanned document, a Word document, an Excel file, a photograph, anything you can attach it here. And then over here you have your filters and this is just a list of uh, part numbers of these, each of these filter types. These are what show up in the reminders uh, printout for loop services if you choose to print out the filters along with the list of items that need to be uh, taken care of. And then the next item here we have is tires and wheels. This is just informational tires and wheels, what tire was installed where and when. And if you have a tire size in here, that's what's gonna show up in the unit information report for DOT uh, requirements in some states. And then we have the work orders. And with work orders, you have the ability, I'm gonna double click this, we'll open up a work order and with work orders, you can enter in unlimited short descriptions, 65,000 characters in the detail description. So you have a lot of room there to write stuff. Uh, who, did, who did the service? That can either be your shop or it can be an outside vendor. And you can also use templates. So if you create a work order, you can down here, you can save it as a template. And then later on, you can reuse that work order based or create a new work order based on that template. So it'll put all the, the short descriptions, the detail description, all the labor and all the parts into the uh, template so that when you use it again in a new, uh, on a new piece of equipment or a new work order, you use the template and it automatically fills in all that more stuff for you. So it saves you a lot of time as far as typing goes. And it'd be real useful for things like uh, loop services or preventative maintenance that you have to do over and over again. And then, uh, so that's real quick. You also can do attachments on the work orders. So if you have uh, a photograph, say the vehicle was in an accident uh, you could have a picture of what it looked like and you could have that attached here so that you don't have to go looking for it on your hard drive. And you can just click on this little magnifying glass to open it up in whatever program Windows uses it open that file up in. And I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this. We'll save and close. And the final thing here is inspections and permits. This just gives you a way to keep track, uh, just a date of when, the, when an inspection or permit was done. This would be the interval. So you can see here, this one is 365. And then this date here on the right is gonna show up as far as when it's gonna be next due again. And you have a print button down here to show you all the uh, permanent inspection items due for this month. It'll highlight them uh, if we just click on here for October. And you can see here that the annual state inspections are due for this equipment. This one over here, it's highlighted for the uh, tractor double sleeper for the DOT inspection and so forth. And then uh, I think that's it for the main screen. Oh, we also have under up over here, we have under forms. You can choose to enter in customer information. Uh, your drop down list maintenance. This is for all little drop downs or on the program. You can edit or add to those lists from here. You can also do that on the fly for, from within the drop down itself. Your parts inventory screen. This allows you to update 
and keep track of your parts. There is no check-in feature for parts and there's no purchase order feature. Basically what you have here is you can see here we've clicked on this part and it shows you all the places this part was installed when and where. So Katatums when you use in work orders gives you keeps track of what part was installed when and where and what it cost at the time of installation. Um, so hopefully that's helpful for you. And we have also your personnel. So if we click on that and we go over here, we can see all the information we have for personnel. You can choose driver, fleet technician, a hire date. Here's all your reminders that you would set up over here on the right. This other tab here is for their, their address, emergency contact information. Here's where the free form license and permits and inspections or endorsements go. And then you can have other attachments for the driver themselves. So it can be a driver's license. It could be some sort of certification that they have. You can scan it and attach it here. And we'll just go ahead and close that. And we also have the work orders list. This is a list of all the work orders in your entire fleet over a specific date range. So if I go back a little bit here, we should be able to see some work orders listed. There we go. And you can sort these by any of these columns and you can also search by various columns as well. And uh, so that's the work orders list. You can also edit a work order from this list here. So if I double click, I can open up that work order, make changes and then save it without having to go to the equipment itself. I can do it by the work order. So I could look at the stuff that's the that's like currently not completed. And then I could, um, I can actually do a filter here Show, to show only the pending work orders. So these ones here are pending and then we can do the date requested sort and it'll show us the oldest date requested at the top, most current one at the bottom. And then so that way you can work on the oldest stuff first if it's critical. And over here you have a notes list and this gives you all the notes that have been entered into the system and you can search by notes and that might help you if you're using the notes to keep track of things like tools on board, tarps, um, generators, compressors, whatever it is that you might have assigned to a piece of equipment and you can't remember where it is. You could, if you have like an ID number or a uh, serial number for that piece of, uh, uh, of, for that unit, for that piece of equipment, I should say, then you can find out where it is actually installed. And so if I double click on this, it'll bring up that piece of equipment in the background and that note over here. And so that's it real quick. And then one final thing I'm just gonna show you real quick as well. We've got lots of reports available. And then over here underneath my company information, uh, you can enter in your company. And so that, that shows up on a lot of the printouts, especially the work orders. You can set up your, uh, your default sales tax information, uh, mark your, your inventory markup, whether it's gonna be a markup or not. And you can have your default labor charge. Also on the, for the personnel, you can have a hourly wage and if you want to use that hourly wage as the work order labor for that particular person, you can enter, check that box there. And then when you create a work order, and as long as they're chosen as a fleet technician, then when you choose that particular employee uh, as doing that labor item, it's going to enter in their hourly wage. All right. So that's it for the quick overview of Tatums. Hopefully that's been helpful for you. And thanks a lot for watching. Have a good one. Take care.